Students, we are going to start lecture number 23 and this will be on a new topic that is on electrical properties. So, in the last lecture we completed our discussion on the topic called thermal properties of nanomaterials. As you know thermal properties are very important for the nanomaterials because of varieties of applications on which or for which nanomaterials are used. Now, the question is whatever we have discussed let us first do a recap. Thermal properties of nanomaterials have been discussed in the light of following two topics. One the melting temperature of nanoparticles or nanomaterials, how the size dependency of melting temperature affects the uses of these materials and then we have discussed about thermal transport that means how the heat transport happens in a nanomaterial. So, for the sake of completeness for the in case of melting temperature we have started with the thermodynamic model of a spherical particle which has been melting down. So, in this process the liquid layer a thin liquid layer forms on the surface of the solid and then this liquid layer moves slowly inside the solid particle and that is how actually melting happens. So, at any instant of time an interface between the liquid layer and the solid core develops and based on that we developed a model and showed how the melting temperature can be related with the of the nanoparticle can be related with the bulk. And this is how the model have been developed looking at different kinds of surface energies and the bulk thermodynamical parameter like bulk gives energy change. Then we looked into some of the thermal transport things like you know in a crystalline material thermal transport happens by electrons and phonons. Electrons are easy to understand if you energize the electrons they will move and depending on the type of bonding electrons movement will be fast or slow or rather will happen or not happen. Like in case of metals electrons are freely available they are not bound to any particular pieces. So, these uh, metals actually these electrons actually are, are not delocalized. So, they act as electron gas. So, therefore, they can move easily, but in case of non metals like ceramics and polymers especially ceramics and many of the carbon based materials you have very less free electron appellables. So, therefore, the transport happens by the phonons. Phonons are nothing but traveling waves due to movement of the or the atoms from its mean position during heating up. So, phonons are nothing but lattice vibrations we have discussed a lot about that and because of these concept that uh, the bonding between the atoms can be thought of like a spring attached to the uh, among the atoms. So, therefore, as soon as you heat it up the atoms actually move from a secular position to the both the sides and because of these the push and pull of the atomic pieces or the bonds can happen. That means, the spring attached to the atom can be pushed or pulled during this to and flow motion from the not to and flow motion, but because of the motion of the atom from its mean position. That this can lead to change of or create of stationary wave called a traveling wave and that is what is known as is the phonon. And we can do a simple maths uh, by develop a phonon uh, you know equations and find a solution and then we can get a phonon dispersion map and then discuss about how these movement of the phonons can affect. But you know in nanomaterials both the electrons and the phonons can get confined or quantum confined because of the size effect. And we have discussed a bit of that in the last lecture we are going to discuss again quite a bit of it today's lecture also. So, therefore, uh, these uh, quantum confinements is basically very important. Uh, to understand that what we did we discussed first the simple atomic structure the bonding structure of the materials and you know electrons participate in the bonding. The anti-bonding orbitals normally lead to formation of conduction bands and bonding orbital leads to formation of the valence band. 
and each band has a width that reflects the interaction between the atoms with a particular band gap between the conduction and the valence bands. This reflects the original separation of the bonding and the antibonding states. In case of metals, there is no band gap. The both the valence and the conduction band overlap, so therefore electrons are free to move. But in case of semiconductors and insulators, there is a definite band gap. In case of semiconductor, the band gap can be easily crossed by the electrons by providing of thermal energies or by doping, but insulators is not possible. So therefore, these uh, electrons uh, now can actually, depending on the nanomaterial dimensions, electrons can undergo what is known as a, the quantum confinements. What is that actually? Well, this is nothing but discretization of the bands. In case of bulk metals, the conduction and the balance bands, they not only do overlap, but also the bands actually are continuous, okay? But in case of nanocrystal materials, the bands actually, they be divided and become discrete. That means with each specific band, will have separate layers of energy levels. And therefore, electrons cannot stay at any energy level they want. And depending on the dimensionality, this can change. It is 0, 1D, or 2D, it can change. Semiconductor, same thing can happen, whether it's a valence or the conduction band, both of them can actually undergo such a kind of discretization. Therefore, the density of states can be plotted as a function of energy, as is shown in the bottom of the picture. For 3D, it's a continuous curve. For 2D, there's a step functions. For 1D and 0D, it becomes very sharp or discrete actually. So that's the difference. And quantum confinements are normally observed in very small size particles like about 200 to nanometers preferably, but no, it can be seen to be happening in particles with less than 5 nanometers. And then we discussed about some of the effects of 2D quantum, 2D nanomaterials that is thin plimps. So thin plimps, the conductivity decreases substantially as compared to bulk. This is for the platinum, or this is for the silicon, or the single layer, double layer. Thermal conductivity do gets affected significantly. Now let's talk about electrical conductivity. I know there is some overlap between electrical conductivity and thermal conductivity. Thermal conductivity is decided by both electrons and phonons. Electrical conductivity is, is only decided by the electron and the whole movements. Okay. The phonons do not participate in the thermal conductivity at all. So now the question is this. You know, as you have seen, the electrical, uh, you know, electronic contributions of the, in case of nanomaterials have been discussed. And the connections, electrons, are, is the delocalized in case of metals. That means electrons can freely move from, in all dimensions. As they travel their paths, electrons are primarily scattered by the various, you know, kind of mechanisms such as phonons, impurities, interfaces, or, so therefore electron movement resembles like a random walk process, right? So however, two distinct things are very important, okay? So one which is very important is the quantum effect. So electrical conductivity is significantly affected by two distinct aspects. One, the quantum effect. What is that? We will discuss in a moment. Second one is what is known as a classical effect. Quantum effect is already been discussed. What is that? Well, due to electron confinement happens because of the size effect, right? That means energy bands are normally displaced, replaced by the discrete energy states, leading to a case where conduction materials can behave like a semiconductor or insulator. Yes, that's what happens. Because of the discretion of the energy bands, then electrons can no longer stay at all energy levels. So therefore, the band gap develops, and depending on the type of band gaps, semiconductor or insulating properties can come in. That's what is basically quantum con effect. So this is nothing but quantum confinement. Right. And what is classical effect? Well, in the classical effect, the mean field path of the in inelastic scattering 
becomes comparable with the size of the system. And this can lead to reduction in the scattering events. That means if you reduce the grain size or the crystallized size of the material, and then this size becomes comparable with the mean free path of the inelastic scattering events, then scattering will be substantially reduced and conductivity can be increased. So, this is the something related mean free path comparable to size of the system, right. That is what will happen. So, we have to discuss the electrical conductivity concerning these two aspects, that is the main two aspects. This is what we should discuss, right? You have to understand that. These are the two things we will discuss in terms of this. Now, in 3D nanomaterial, where the all the three spatial dimensions are more than 100 nanometer, think of 3D, 3D nanomaterial, what happens? All the three spatial dimensions are above the nanometric range, that is more than 100 nanometers. So, therefore, these effects will not make any significant issue on the electrical conductivity, right. And that way you can ignore even these effects at all. So, however, bulk nanocrystal materials exhibit high gain boundary to volume ratio and this can lead to increase electrical uh, electron scattering and as a consequence nano size gain or 3D nanomaterials can so decrease electrical conductivity. So, because this is basically because of the scattering effect, scattering of electrons okay, due to large number of gain boundaries. This can lead to decrease of electrical conductivity. Right. But what happens to the nanomaterials? So, before we discuss about that, let us talk about what is this quantum confinement again and we will discuss in both in physical and, and mathematical terms together. Okay. This is very similar problem as we discussed in last class in a particle in box situation that is what we are going to bring it. Okay. And therefore, because of this situation, Heisenberg uncertainty principle can be applied and it can lead to more specially confined, remember this word, specially confined and localized electronic bands. And therefore, because of that, broader range of moment of energy of electrons is possible. And this can be manifested in terms of energy of electrons in the conduction band is equal to increased energy level spacing or rather larger band gaps, correct. So, that is what is the uh, effect we see. And uh, now, in case of 2, 1 and 0 dimension nanomaterials, in case of 2 nanometer, 2 dimension nanometer like in thin flames, the electronic motion is confined in the thickness directions. It is free in the plane of the thin flame like x and y directions. But in case of 1D nanomaterials like a quantum wires, nano wires and tubes, electronic motion is quantized in two directions. Only in one direction like z directions, electronic motion is free, okay. but in the other two directions electron motions are confined. In case of 3D as like quantum dots, okay, the electrons can easily move in no direction or like zero dimension. Okay. So, therefore, in case of quantum dots you have three dimensional quantization happen. In case of quantum wires or, two or one dimensional material you have two dimensional quantization happens and in case of quantum wells like in thin flames you have one dimensional quantization, quantization can happens. And you know this confinement direction charge changes a continuous k component to a discrete components characterized by quantum number n. Okay. How this happens? Let us do that. Well, that is can be treated in simply looking at one dimensional case, 1 d potential well like particle in a box. So, what does it mean? So, it means that you have a particle inside a box, the particle is x equal to 0 to x equal to l and then you have a particle sitting here like this with a mass m. right? 
that's what it is. So what will happen to the energy levels of that particle? That's what is important, right? And the particle is basically electron here. So let us do that. So you know, in order to teach such a kind of things, we should first solve the, the as you've seen here, first you need to solve the quant the, the Schrodinger equations. What is Schrodinger equation is? We know the Schrodinger equation is like this: E psi is equal to a square w psi. That's equal to j h cross. This is h cross. H cross means h by h cross is always h by two pi. Correct. So now the question is very simple. Question is very very simple. Let me just see what I can, how best I can do that. Okay. Question is very very simple. So I can write down the this equation very simply. Okay. Like this. So minus j h cross d by del t psi is equal to h cross square 2 m uh, del psi by del x square this is 1 d v x psi x. This is what it is. So, v x is basically the potential and psi x the wave function. Remember that psi is nothing but the wave function. So, that is something you should not forget. These are the very standard terms and it is in x directions and t is the time h cos h by m is the mass of the particle. So, now the question is this how do you solve this equation in case of uh, this potential well? Obviously, inside this potential well v x is equal to 0 right which is which is true for the this domain x is equal to less than equal to 0 less than equal to l. So, we can write down e psi is equal to minus a square h square square 2 m d square psi by d x square right or basically it is it can be written like this correct or you can write down like e or we can write down this very simply del square psi n by del x square plus k n square psi n is equal to 0, where k n square is nothing but twice m e n by a square. So, now we can assume the psi for this equation, the solution of the psi a a a sin k n x okay, plus b cos k n x. Right. Or it basically you can also do C1 exponential j, j is a vector basically k n x plus C2 minus, please do not ask me how I am getting this, these are all elementary plus 2 level uh, differential equation solution. Remember this is a ordinary differential equation, this is not a partial differential equation, okay. why? Because it is one dimensional, that is why. So, one dimensional case this will be ordinary differential equation. So, such a kind of ordinary differential equation if you have it can have such a kind of solutions. Okay. So, now once you know these are the two solutions possible you can apply boundary condition right. What are the BCs here? Very simply BCs what are the BCs? You can see that at x equal to 0 as x equal to 0 what? At x is equal to 0 psi is 0 right. So, what does it mean? That mean k n l is equal to n pi. Yes, because if it is 0, uh, x is equal to 0. So, cos 0 is equal to 1, sin 0 is 0, right. So, then k n cos, if cos 0 is 1, k n become n pi, right. So, therefore, and uh, this is the boundary condition. Therefore, we get psi 0 to be 0 when b is 0 right. So, finally, you can clearly see upon doing applying similarly similarly one other boundary condition is what another boundary condition as is equal to l psi is equal to 0 right that is also true. So, therefore, psi x is given as root 9 2 by l sin n pi l x right that is what it is this is the wave function. Similarly, energy is given as E n is h square 
pi square twice m l square n square and this is nx here obviously because it is one dimension this is the energy this is the wave function so if you can you can solve such a kind of expression very easily very easily you can solve such a kind of expression it is not difficult and if you are not able to do that so please get back to me we can do that but solving this Cartesian equation in 1d is a very readily elementary things in physics it is not at all a difficult term and you know we have already considered such a kind of system so x is equal to 0 v is basically going to infinity as is equal to l v is going to be infinity also so therefore at this position less electron cannot stay so therefore psi is 0 here sorry psi is 0 here psi is also 0 there right that is very clear so now uh, you have clearly so this is what we got this is the same expression we have got there okay or we have got something else of we have not we have not got anything so something wrong here I am sorry, oh, I made a mistake. So root, this is basically root. Huh. This is the thing. Okay. So, that is the solution of the equation. So, if you put the solution, it will be okay. So, now what happens in case of nanomaterials? Let us discuss. In case of 2D nanomaterials, thickness at which uh, the thickness of the nanoscale, basically, thickness is the nanoscale. Uh, so, therefore, quantum confinement will occur along the thickness dimensions, right. Simultaneously, carrier motion is or electronic motion, the whole motion is uninterrupted along the plane of the sheet. What does that mean? So, if you have a if you have a 2D thin film like this on a substrate, the small thickness, right, and this is what is your thickness is. So, I can write down this is my x, this is y and this is your z, right. So, thickness in the z direction. So, therefore, you can see the quantum confinement or the electron such a kind of thing. So, just now we discussed the electron is in a potential well. Such situation is only happening in the thickness direction, okay. This aspect, this aspect happening only thickness direction. Thickness direction is confined, okay. This direction has a length which is almost close to the electronic energy bands or the lambda actually. So, therefore, but other two direction electron can move uninterrupted okay, without any problems. So, that means the, along the plane of the sheet of the uh, along the plane of the surface electron can move very easily. And in fact, as the thickness decreases, decreases wave function of the electrons will be substantially limited by the wave function will, function will be substantially limited by the what? By the specific value along the cross section. Why it will be specific value? That is very simple. So, if this is the length, the value of wave, the, you can see this is energy at n equal to 1 or this is basically how the wave functions will look like, not the energy. Okay? So, electron can have specific wavelengths. You can see this is L by 2, this is L by 4, L by 6, L by 8, L by 10. Right, that's what will happen. You remember that one wave is this, right? Am I clear? Right. So it's something like that. This is half of the wave, two L basically. So not L by two. So this is half of the wave, the two L. Okay. This is L, then L by three L by two. L by this is two L, and this is two and a half L. Correct, seven L by two. Am I clear? So three point five. Sorry, five L by two. That's very clear. So this is because electronic wavelengths are multiple integers of the thickness. That's very clear. The wavelengths of the electrons, this is the lambda. That is multiple integers of the thickness. So all the ele other electron wavelengths will not be present. They will be absent. In other words, there is a reduction in the number of energy states available for the electronic conduction along the thickness. So, you have discretized now the energy levels such a way only few energy levels are allowed, electron can stay there. Electron cannot stay in all the energy level like in a continuous system, continuous kind of spectrum, right. So, electron become trapped, obviously they are trapped in a well and 
width of width is equal to thickness. So, in a general electron containment of the energy states in 2D nanometer materials with thickness and nanoscale is given by this expression E n equal to pi square a square square 2 m l square into n square and we have discussed about everything. Now, this particular expression is assumes an infinite depth potential well, but carriers are free to move along the x and y directions right. So, therefore, total energy of a carrier will have two components one along the thickness other one is because of the uninterrupted movement of the electrons along the plane of the system. So, understand this energy levels or energy associated unrestricted motion. So, let us assume z is the thickness that we have already done ok. If you assume z is thickness and x and y are the in plane that is what exactly I drawn in this picture x and y the in plane and z is the thickness right. So, now the question is very simple under these conditions unrestricted movement of the electrons are characterized by two vectors k y and k x a restricted movement of the electron is characterized by k z right they are the wave vectors. So, you can see that we can write down the momentums p z is equal to what h k z you might be asking how I am getting that is basically from the de Broglie's equation what is lambda is equal to p by m v right am I correct. So, m v is what p by lambda correct. So, now you know that this can be written as a so uh, this is the momentum so p is equal to uh, yeah p is equal to that ok h by lambda sorry h by lambda is h by p right ok. So, h of oh, something wrong I have written right of oh, sorry I am writing something wrong let me correct it. So, I can draw this equation lambda is equal to what lambda is equal to h by p. So, p is equal to h by lambda so, that means it is written as a 1 by lambda is k. So, h k z right it can be written actually 8 k. So, p x is equal to h k x p y is equal to h k y p z is equal to h k z these are the momentums. So, we can write down that the energy corresponding to this, this, this kind of uninterrupted electrons or the delocalized electrons is given for the energy of the delocalized electrons. So, this we can write down delocalized is given as by the Fermi's energy that is nothing but what a square a square a square square not a square into k f square divided by twice m l square. You must be thinking what from the k is a square coming very simple n square is replaced by k f right. And uh, so, therefore, you can write down this is what is known as actually Fermi energy also this is the highest occupied energy levels or Fermi energy levels ok. So, now therefore, I get this is what is unfettered energy and here k f is what root of k x square by k o y square correct because these are the two direction which electron can move unfettered or uninterrupted. So, therefore, total energy of system is E n is equal to what pi square a square 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 n x s n z s square divided by twice m l square plus this part a square square k f s square by twice m l square right. So, one can actually take a common of 2 m l square and you can see this become or a square a square square pi square n z square plus k f square this is what it is. So, you see the electrons electronic states are confined along these thickness directions electron movement is only momentum is in only relevant in the in plane directions other directions is not important. So, as a result scattering by phonons and impurities can occur in the in plane direction like electrons which are moving along the plane they can only undergo scattering because of phonons or because of you know gain boundaries or because of impurity atoms many other things ok. So, however, the 2 nanometer nanocrystalline structure 
will have large number of gain boundaries also. So this gain boundaries also act as scatter. Am I clear? That's what will happen. And so therefore, smaller the gain size, lower will be electrical conductivity for the 2D dynamic steel materials. That's very clear because it's confined because of that in jet direction is confined because of that electrical conductivity will decrease. But still electron can have an unfettered, undisturbed motion along the plane. But there also depending on the gain size, this motion will be hindered because of the scattering events. But that is classical effect actually. So you have both the quantum confined effect classical level presence together. That is what happens. Okay. I hope I have made it clear. So this is something which is very unique for the 2D materials and it is easy to understand. That is what I started with the 2D materials and describe the whole things. So first you solve the squadinate equations for a one dimensional case because 2D is one dimensional quantized, other two dimension it is not quantized and it is easy to do these calculations. And then you can bring about this concept of motion of electrons confined along their directions but unconfined or undisturbed or uninterrupted along the plane of the material. That is something which is very important. So what I mean in case of 1D material? Right, let's see that. Okay, well, I will come back to these equations later. So, in case of one D materials, comp quantum confinement will occur in the two dimensions. One D material, like a nano tube, nano wire, will have in two directions, where unrestricted motion can occur only along the axis of the nano tube, rod, or wire. So, contrary to two D materials, two D nano materials, which allows only one value of the principal quantum number for the each energy states, you have seen it is only NZ in this case. Here you have a two dimensional confinements and two quantum numbers will be used for that. So how it will be? Let us do that. I will erase it. So it is like a nano wire or nano tube. So let us draw this nano wire and do that again the mathematical part so that you can understand without any problems. Obviously, you will always have some questions, so for that only you do need to read the books and understand the things very clearly. Okay. So, I first draw a nanotube. So, in this nanotube, this is the z directions. Okay, I am changing okay, directions now, z and this and this, these are two directions, x and y. Okay. Why is not Z? It is a 3D. Okay. You have to understand that. So, because there will be confinement along X and Y directions and Z direction is unfettered movement of the electrons or undisturbed movement of electron will happen. So, what will happen? We can always write down E N X N Y is equal to pi square H square N X square by twice m l square plus pi square h square square n y square by twice m l square. This is what will happen. And along the z directions, it will not be. So, along the z directions, e z rather, or it, it will be like this. The earlier case, right. So, e n here is n x square plus y square, h square, y is m l square, n y square, right. That is what it is, is n y. That is top also I have written, right. That is what is E n. So, total energy of the system then E total is pi square, h square, square square, twice m l square into n x square plus pi square h square square pi twice m l square n y square plus a square k f square divided by twice m l square. Right. So, it states the one dimensional nanomaterials will not show a single energy band, but it will spread into sub bands. That is what it tells you. It will spread into sub bands. It will not even have one single band, because you have discretization happening in two directions x and y. So, you will have sub bands. Because of these confinement effects, nanoscale dimensions of 1D act as a reflector. 
will act as a reflector. You know what I mean reflector? A reflector, if you put a beam, it will come back reflector. Same thing will happen here. So, it will not allow electron to exit the surfaces. They will, they cannot go beyond that, this, this surfaces of the material, okay. Or rather, not from the material, but say, from the energy bands actually, because each energy band, the sub band will act as the surface. So, in addition, scattering of impurities and obviously phonons will also be happening along the long axis or z axis of this nanotube and therefore, what will happen? And you know, this will happen and the scattering will be more as the size decreases further, that is the length of the tube decreases further, the wire decreases further. As a consequence, transport of electrons on the tube will occur without significant loss of kinetic energies or in other words, transport along the electron transport along the z direction will be ballastic. Okay. Remember this word ballastic. Ballastic means very high speed. You have probably heard of intercontinental ballistic missiles. So, ballastic means very high speed transport will happen. And this is more generally found in case of 2D uh, nanometer, 1D nanometers in the, at low temperatures. So, like says of nanotubes, some of the nanotubes are metallic. Okay. What does it mean? The conductivity is extremely high. You know how high? It is 1 billion amperes per centimeter square. In case of copper, it is only 1 million. So, you have a three orders of magnitude increase of the electrical conductivity along the z direction or the length of the tube can happen in case of metallic carbon nanotubes. Okay. So, we will first we will discuss later on what is metallic and what is uh, non-metallic carbon nanotubes that is part we have not yet talked about it, but for the sake of understanding assume that the electronic motion will happen in a ballistic way a very fast manner unfettered undisturbed manner along the tube or the length of the tube and therefore, you have a huge thermal electrical conductivity. Same thing happened for electrical thermal conductivity also, phonons can move very easily, we have discussed about that. So, in addition to this effect, carbon nanotubes also exhibit very low density of defects and high thermal dissipation. So, therefore, thermal dissipation may heat will be moving also fast. As you pass the current, there will be Joule effects, because the heat will be produced. So, if heat is also dissipated, electrical conductivity will also increase. Okay. So, because of the low concentration of defects and, and high thermal uh, heat distributions, again electrical conductivity will further rise in case of nanotubes along the direction of the uh, length of the tube. Correct. So, this is something which is very important in case of nanotubes, nanowires or even in case of uh, rods actually. This is very frequently observed. That is why these materials become very important in 90s, uh, they, they, are, they are very highly considered as an important aspect of subjects. And after that, sir, metallic nanowires came like gold, silver, platinum nanowires, they are these effects were even stronger, because you have a metallic things coming into picture, you have in nanotubes, that is not always the case, but in case of metals, electrons are free. So, therefore, you have addition of that, so you can have very high electrical conductivity in some metallic nanowires. Well, so that is something which is important to know for the 2D, uh, sorry 1D nanometers. What happens in 0D or quantum dots? Okay. So, let us discuss about that. So, quantum dots, they are all the three dimensions are in nanoscale. So, this quantum confinement will happen in three directions all together, right. It is bound to happen. So, if that is what is going to happen in all the three dimensions, so what will happen? So, zero dimensional, zero dimensional nanomaterials, the motion of electrons is totally confined along the three dimensional directions like x, o, y and z. So, therefore, energy E can be given as this equation plus in pi square, a square square, 2 ml square in y square plus pi square a square square twice m l square in z square, right. They are confined in all three directions. So, under these conditions, metallic system will behave like an insulator, because electron will be, electron motion will be confined in the three surfaces x, y, z, correct. They will not be able to move 
because of discretion of the bands. So you can imagine in one dimensional uh, confinements that is in 2D nano materials, you have confinement only happening in one direction. So this will lead to such a kind of energy band structure. In 2D, you have two dimensional confinements. So therefore, there will be sub band formation. In 3D, I, I zero D nano materials, you have in the three directions basically confinement happens. So sub bands will be divided into more and more sub bands. That is why in 0D you have discrete, complete discretion or delta function type energy bands. So electron can only stay in this portion. In this portion, electron cannot stay. It is not allowed. So because of this, they behave like insulator in all the three directions. So you can make an insulating metallic nanomaterials by making them quantum dots. So that is very, very important. So that is what I have shown you. In a 3D, you have uh, density of states, continuous function of x uh, energy levels. In a 2D, you have step functions, and in 1D, you have certain kind of things, and in 0D, it's completely discretized. This is something which is very, very easily found. Okay, so that's because in a sheet, a sheet, it can unfettered movements, and the length of the wire it has unfettered movement of the electrons and quantum dots, it cannot move at all. So, so far we have been discussing the electrical properties of this different dimensions of nanomaterials like 0 d, 1 d, 2 d and 3 d in isolated entities. But you know from the particle point of view, these materials need to be coupled to the external circuits if you want to use by electrodes, right. If you want to use this you have to connect with electrodes. For 2 d and 3 d nanomaterials, this will be like a ohmic kind of a contact, right? The moment you are contacting with a wire, for 2D and 3D, it will be like ohmic contacts. There will be voltage stops. But for 0D and 1D nanomaterials, the contrast resistance from the nanomaterials and the connecting leads will be extremely high. It will be extremely high, okay? So, therefore, one mechanism of providing conduction is. So you cannot use it, right? One uh, conducting this is what? That is by electron tunneling. And this is a quantum mechanical effect in which electron can penetrate a potential well, a barrier due to high energy, potential high, which is higher than the kinetic energy of electrons. Okay, that's possible. Electron tunneling is possible. So you have a very high energy barrier. Electron can actually tunnel through this. That's what it is telling. Same thing happen happen here electron can turn into that. Correct? That is what you have to use. So, how do you understand that? Well, that can be easily understood by, by have a uh, like such a kind of structure like you have a one metal and one insulator. You have insulator is sandwiched between two metal layers. This is metal, this is insulator, this is metal. Then you have to connect with leads. Okay. The simple way of achieving this is to apply voltage V across the circuit to raise the Fermi energy, correct, one of the metals. You apply voltage, Fermi energy of one of the metals will increase because obviously with the moment you put energy, electrons will move from the valence band and go above, much above the valence band and the, the height of the upper level of electrons in the conduction mile will move up, right. So that is what is called Fermi energy level, Fermi energy level will go up and uh, because of that what will happen? Because of these uh, electrons that can tunnel from one metal with the highest energy Fermi energy level to the metal with the lowest Fermi energy level, that is you are creating a you know upper and lower sides to jump electrons from the jump from the uh, highest occupied Fermi level in the metal which is on which voltage is applied. So the one on which this and electron energy levels are lower. This is something which is very unique and widely uh, found. Okay, so you know regular electronic circuits. We all know that regular electron circuits. This is what is ohmic top is, or rather R is equal to V by I, right? And however, in this case, resistance is primarily due to electronic tunneling because of electron resistance is happening. So, as an example, if you have a gold array of gold nanoparticles, which are electrically coupled by connecting the nanoparticles to each other by organic molecules, you can put organic layers around this, that is nothing but a capped layer. 
a nanoparticle can act as a metal electrode, whereas the organic molecule can play as a thin insulator. Under this condition, condition conduction conductance basically C is given as a I by P. Okay, and this is will increase due to electron tunneling are compared to in case of nanoparticles who are not connected by the organic molecules. If there is no organic layer around it, the conduction will increase in this case. Well, so that is uh, something which is very important. Uh, in the next lecture, I will primarily talk about the magnetic properties of the materials. It is easy to discuss about these aspects, but there are some things of the electrical conductivity. I will finish it off, then I will talk about the its aspect of magnetic properties. Okay. So, keep in mind that this discussion requires you to understand the basics of quantum mechanics. So, please do study that because law, all, all these things like electrical properties, thermal properties, electrical properties, magnetic properties and optical properties will be basically based on the quantum mechanical treatments that is solution of these coordinate equations and other aspects also and electron the confinement effect, quantum confinement effects very strongly will come into picture. So, please do study these aspects and we will get back to you. Thank you. Thank you.